All right, so today I'm here to talk about the florist rose, or horticultural monstrosity. And we're probably used to seeing these a lot, but they have an absolutely ridiculous number of petals. And why do they have this? Because humans thought, wow, these look nice, and basically just went completely crazy as far as breeding for mutations. So this is a really, really crazy kind of flower. It's like, oh no, I'm destroying it. I'm just trying to get to the actual reproductive parts, which is why this is not something that you would find in the wild, because there's so many petals, it's just ridiculous. Okay, so we finally got on the inside. These are the reproductive parts. This is one of the reasons why hybrid roses a lot of times are uh, troublesome to breed because they're missing a lot of their reproductive parts because most of these petals here are basically converted from stamens. So on the inside we've got, these are the pistils. Basically the top end, we've got the stigma and the style, and then we've got a bunch of stamens around the edge. So this is kind of a, it's kind of halfway between a sepal. So you can see here, a normal wild rose will have five petals, um, but this one does have five sepals. So five sepals is the normal number, and that's usually, that's indicative of a eudicot. So even though I've ripped this guy open, all the reproductive structures are actually intact there. Now it would not be able to form fruit because, of course, it's a cut flower rose and it needs to be attached to a plant most likely to actually be able to form seeds. But anyway, I'll, sh I'll zoom in here in a second and we'll talk about the interior parts. All right, so this is a close-up of the rose. It's basically been pulled apart. So these things right here in the center, these are the carpels, and there are many, many carpels. And of course, since this is a hybrid, cultivated, mutated rose, We've got lots and lots of these. So right here, let's see if we can pull one out. This right there, that's one carpel right there. That's one of these carpels. So the bottom here, that's the ovary. Pull this off to the side. That's the ovary there. We've got the style. And right at the end there, that's kind of yellowish, with the pink on the bottom, that's, that's the actual stigma right there. So the stigma is where the pollen would have to land to pollinate this. Now, many hybrid roses are pretty much um, kind of sterile, or at least close to it, because so many of their stamens have been converted into petals. So I've ripped off a bunch of these petals already, just so I could get at uh, some of the stamens. So right back here, move this a little bit, rip off a few more petals here. So you, now you can see the sepals are down here. So you got sepals there, got bits of petals right here. So you got bits of petals here. And if you look right here, these are the stamens. So you've got lots and lots of stamens. So you've got lots of stamens, lots of pistils right there. And you can see each one, it's almost got like a little lip shape. So those are the stigmas and the styles. This is an Apocarpus gynetium, meaning that none of these are fused to each other. So these are all separate from one another. And that means that this particular plant is actually has superior ovaries because these are attached down at the bottom and all this other stuff the sepals the petals everything is attached to this stuff which i've allowed to brown a little bit this is the hypanthium so there's hypanthium this big cup that goes around and this is classic um, rose family situation where you've got this hypanthium in this cup they don't all have it but many of the members do so usually there's a lot of hair on the inside of this, and this whole thing, this hypanthium will actually swell up 
and make a specialized fruit called a hip. But it's actually an Apocarpus gynetium. It's technically a, a, uh, an aggregate fruit because each of these is actually turns into an akene, a dry fruit. And then it's surrounded by this fleshy hypanthium tissue. And that makes a rose hip. So let me show you these stamens again. So these are all the stamens right here. And you can see each one is attached to a filament. I'm going to pull one off. Okay, I'll pull five off. <laughs> so this right here, this is the anther. This is the part that's actually going to release the pollen. And down here, this is the stalk for the anther. That's the filament right there. And again, on the flower, there's a whole, this rose filament, there's just tons and tons of these things. So anther, filament. You can see, maybe, right there, we've got some filaments where the anthers, I ripped them off. But each of these are stamens. And then in the center here, these are all these separate stigmas and styles, these separate carpels, these separate pistils none of which are fused to each other. So Apocarpus gynetium, periginous flower because of this cup that goes around all of these separate carpels. And this one I ripped off by itself. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit of the anatomy of, of a rose, specifically of a greenhouse grown florist's rose not a wild rose.